In today's morning meds, we answer the question, should Christians live together before they get married? So if you're ready, then let's go. Welcome back to Morning Meds, where we meditate on God's word in order to tackle everyday issues that we face as Christians. And if you like what you see on Morning Meds, do not forget to like, subscribe, as well as share so that we can make it through this life together with the help of God. I would like to take one second to acknowledge all of our new subscribers. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the channel. I hope that you are blessed by what you find here at Q Culture. Everywhere we look, we see an uptick in cohabitation. In fact, if you're between the ages of 18 and 44, you're probably more likely to have cohabitated than to have been married. You may have heard the following reasons or some like it about cohabitation. Girl, you got to test drive the car before you buy it. It'll help us save for the wedding. He better show me some kind of commitment. It just seemed like the next step for our relationship. Girl, he's just moving in to help me with the kids. Cohabitating or shacking is basically sharing a living space with another. But today we'll focus mainly on significant other and partner relationships for Christians. But it ain't in the Bible. You're correct. It is not specifically mentioned in scripture, but that's because it wasn't really necessary in those times. Why? In biblical times, once a man proposed marriage, he went straight to work to build an apartment or a place onto his father's house for he and his bride. The groom would not see the bride until the home was complete and the father of the groom gave his approval. While the groom was at his father's house preparing a place, the bride would be at her father's house preparing the celebration. Once the groom's father gave his approval of the dwelling, the groom went immediately to marry his bride. He would not wait. The whole town was shut down in order to witness the union. It would have actually been impossible for people of those days to shack up because they wouldn't have even had a place to live. The truth of this custom is even used by Jesus in John chapter 14, as well as in the parable of the wise and the foolish in Matthew chapter 25. What if we live together, but we don't have sex? It is a Christian belief that premarital sex is not God pleasing. And sex is usually implied when you consider cohabitating. But I get it. Just because you're living with someone doesn't mean that you're having sex. So let's talk about it. Cohabitating while abstaining from sex may be toying with temptation. Laying up beside all that buttery brown might get too tantalizing. You must limit contact when it comes down to resisting temptation. So should I do it? Let's put it this way. Living together with the intent of getting married is like buying a house full of furniture with the intent of purchasing a home. It doesn't make good financial sense and it offers a whole lot of weight that you just don't need right now. In my personal opinion, cohabitating is not a bad idea, but it's definitely not a God idea. But at the end of every single day, we get the choice of free will. You and your partner will have to seek God and his word for a true answer on whether or not cohabitating is harmful or helpful to your journey with Jesus Christ, not just your journey to the altar. God wants our marriages and relationships to be blessed, not counterfeit. 
Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we humbly submit our will to yours. Lord God, we may have been wrong. We may have gotten wrong information. We may have been mixed up, God. But now that we know the truth about your word, we ask you, Lord, to allow us and give us the courage to make the change. We know that it will not be easy because we're used to what we've been doing. But we ask you, Lord God, to give us freedom to choose. And we ask you, Lord God, to give us the strength to not be entangled again. Lord, receive our our receive our repentance, receive our I'm sorry, receive our confession in the name of Jesus. We love you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.